One theory of bonding that we talked about already was the Lewis dot structure, which proposed that two electrons that are shared between two atoms would form a chemical bond. And these electrons are arranged such that each atom in the molecule has eight electrons around it. The valence bond theory is an extension of that idea using quantum mechanics. It was formulated in the 1930s primarily by Linus Pauling. The idea here is that bonds are formed by the overlap of valence orbitals on different atoms and then these this overlapped orbital um, have two electrons in them and that's what forms the chemical bond. Let's look at that in a little more detail. Let's for instance take the atom fluorine. Fluorine will be F, F, the Lewis dot structure has seven electrons around a fluorine atom, sorry, and along this fluorine atom there are seven electrons and that's the Lewis dot structure said that he, these two electrons here would be shared between the two fluorine atoms to form a, a bond. If we translate that into quantum mechanics, let's look at the electron con configuration of fluorine. It's 1s2, 2s2, and 2p7. These are core electrons and these here are valence electrons. So it's the valence bond theory has to do with the valence electrons here. Let's write this yet in another way. Look, look at the valence electrons. Here's the 2s and here's the 2p. The 2p, there are three orbitals there. And if we use the Aufbau principle and Hund's rule, we start filling these up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, there's uh, oh, 2p7. Oh boy, I'm getting tired here. This should be 2p5. All right, so hey, I have an eraser function on my little pen here, so I'll just do that. 2p5, yeah, okay, time to wake up. So it's two, four, six, seven electrons there, seven electrons in a valence band. Well, if you're a valence bond kind of person, you would say, aha, here is an orbital that just has one electron in it. And let's, this will be for one fluorine. For another fluorine, we'll draw, this, draw the same thing, 2p. And we have then the seven valence electrons in the, the shell here. And here's another valence electron with just one electron in them. So valence bond theory says that these two will overlap these p orbitals here will overlap to form a bond. Or looking at it yet another way, let's look at that fluorine molecule and let's draw that p orbital that has one electron in it. And there's fluorine with the p orbital that has the one electron, that p orbital. That's the p orbital we're drawing there. And there is overlap here and that corresponds to a bond. So there's one electron for this fluorine, one electron for this fluorine. When you combine them, you have two electrons, which is, forms this covalent bond. So that, in a nutshell, is what valence bond theory is. It is the overlap of atomic orbitals, one on each atom, to form a bond between the two atoms. So let's go back here. Let's look at, say, uh, H2 and see how valence bond theory would look at H2. So here is uh, the wave function. And let's explain these symbols here in the next slide here. Here's the idea. We have hydrogen, which has a 1s1. And we have another hydrogen, which has a 1s1. And let's call this hydrogen atom 1 and hydrogen atom 2. So hydrogen atom 1 has an electron, which is called electron 1. Hydrogen atom 2 has an electron, which is called electron 2. So we can draw or write an orbital, an atomic orbital in hydrogen, to be 1, let's call this Ij, where I will correspond to the electron number. I will correspond to the electron number and J will correspond to the atom number. So for example, you write psi 1 1. This implies that you have electron from atom 1 
on atom 1 and psi 1 2 will be the first electron on the second atom and so on so if we then look at the, that notation on this slide here here's psi 1 1 psi 1 2 they're all 1s so we'll ignore the 1s as the superscript we'll just look at this and let's look at this first wave function here psi this now will be the wave function for the molecule the H2 molecule that will be 1 over the square root of 2 that's a normalization of the wave function the first electron the first atom times the wave function of the second electron the second atom and well, what do we do the first one there we're going to say add those two so we're going to add it plus the wave function of the second the electron of the second atom located on the first atom times the wave function of the first electron the electron from the first atom located on the second atom and now if you look at this is this uh, symmetric so we still have to satisfy the Pauli principle so that if we exchange electrons then we have to have a negative sign in the wave function the total wave function so if we change electrons and essentially what we're doing is taking one and put it on two and two on one that's what we have here you see there looks like we're not going to change signs so that the change in sign has to be taken care of by the spin function so that will be one over the square root of two and the spin function we want is alpha beta minus beta alpha so this we know if we change the coordinates or switch electrons this will be negative here we switch electrons for that positive sign the plus there it won't be negative so we add this spin term on to satisfy the uh, Pauli principle and so that's how we get that and similarly we can get the other three here so valence bond is looking at an overlap between orbitals on each atom and since electrons are indistinguishable you have to have in all these wave functions the electron both on atom 1 and on atom 2 because you can't tell which electron is which so that's how you get these now when you do uh, actually do calculate the energy what you're going to get is two different types of terms for instance you get one term like this and one term like this well let's see exactly how you get those terms well recall that the to calculate the expectation value for energy that will be the wave function of the entire molecule H2 times the Hamiltonian or sorry operated Hamiltonian operated on psi this is the broad ket notation so let's change that into integral notation this is the integral of the wave function total wave function star times the operator H times psi total wave function times d tau over all space well let's use that first one that we looked at the first uh, total wave function of the molecule that would be the integral of 1 over square root of 2 that's the normalization factor so here we have psi 1 1 uh, psi 2 2 and then we're going to switch the electrons here and add them so this would be psi 2 1 electron from atom 2 on atom 1 and the electron from atom 1 on atom 2 and we'll ignore the spin functions for now and let's look first at the Coulomb term so that would be e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r12 so this is the electron electron repulsion term and now we have to multiply this and this would be complex conjugate multiply this by the wave function again psi 1 1 psi 2 2 plus psi 2 1 psi 1 2 now if we multiply this out and this is over all space d tau and we multiply this out we'll have this times that times that this times that times that that times that times that and so on so what we end up with will be terms like this psi 1 1 that's one ele the electron from the first atom on the first atom psi 2 2 okay these electrons in each atom 
and then the potential energy term e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r12 that's the distance between the two electrons this is a repulsion term times psi 1 1 and psi 2 2 and this will be an integral over all space and those are the terms you get by multiplying this times that times that that times that times that but you also get terms like that times that times that where the electrons have been switched so you also get terms like the integral of psi 1 2 or sorry what psi 1 1 psi 2 2 e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r 1 2 times psi 2 1 psi 1 2 d tau so what this means is you have the first electron on the first atom, second electron on the second atom. Now what you've done is taking the second electron and put it on the first atom, and the first electron put it on the second atom. And that is something that you can't explain classically. Why is there an energy term? In fact, this gives you a stabilization of energy just by switching electrons. The electrons are indistinguishable. They have the same charge, same mass, and so on. So classically, why would the energy change? Why would you get a term in the Hamiltonian just by switching electrons? So this is a purely quantum mechanical effect, and this is called the exchange terms. This then would be the Coulomb interaction, where you just have one electron on one and one electron on the second, and they're just interacting that way. But you have exchange terms, and those exchange terms are purely quantum mechanical, something you expect only in quantum mechanics, not in classical mechanics. All right, so that's in a nutshell valence bond theory, uh, quantum mechanically and also qualitatively when you look at overlap of valence orbitals on different atoms.